Hello and welcome back to Bamboo Batu, your consistent source of stimulating bamboo information and discussion. Today we are looking at carbon farming with bamboo. Carbon farming is a hot topic. Uh, just a reminder, if you love learning about bamboo, please check out my website, bamboobatu.com, B-A-M-B-U, B-A-T-U, hundreds of free articles, tons of Tons of good information all about bamboo, bamboo uses, bamboo cultivation, bamboo industry. Great stuff. Check it out. So bamboo, bamboo, uh, carbon farming, uh, carbon farming with, with bamboo and carbon farming in general are super interesting topics these days. And that is primarily because of the climate situation that we are in, which is directly related to the abnormally high levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So carbon farming refers to the cultivation of plants and trees and grasses like bamboo, which absorb carbon from the atmosphere and store that carbon in the biomass, in the plant tissue, in the leaves, the stems, the roots of the plant. Photosynthesis, as I'm sure you know, is the process by which all these plants um, pretty much all plants on earth, um, take sunlight and turn it into food. Uh, that is sugar in the plant. As they do this, they absorb CO2 from the atmosphere and release oxygen back into the atmosphere, which is a super crucial thing because animals, including humans do the opposite. We inhale oxygen, we exhale CO2. So it's a perfect a symbiotic relationship between animals and plants to maintain this stable equilibrium of atmospheric gases. It's pretty remarkable if you think about how stable these uh, gases have been in the atmosphere, the levels of CO2, oxygen, um, hydrogen, etc. in the atmosphere. But uh, lately, uh, you can check out my previous video about about carbon sequestration lately, CO2 levels have been getting a little bit out of control. So, uh, lots of people are trying to plant more trees and other crops that will absorb CO2 and bamboo because of its super, super great, fast rate of growth, high metabolism, it absorbs CO2 faster than anything. Most, most statistics say that C, uh, that bamboo absorbs about 35% more co2 than an equal area of trees um that's a statistic which could be researched and confirmed um with more data but that's pretty much what people are using right now so apart from just the fact that people want to have a cleaner atmosphere there is some financial incentive behind carbon farming uh behind absorbing co2 from the atmosphere and that would be the carbon credit system so carbon credit generation uh, involves starting a carbon capture project uh, like a forest or a bamboo grove, bamboo plantation. Um, other types of grasses can be really powerful CO2 absorbers too, uh, creating what we call a carbon sink. There is a rigorous assessment process um, to get the carbon credits. The carbon credits can then be sold on the international market. Uh, the voluntary carbon trading marketplace where companies who are trying to achieve carbon neutrality, net zero, um, climate goals like these, they need to reduce their footprint. And in many cases, that means purchasing offsets to offset what they are already doing. Uh, hopefully they are also working on what we call insets, which is reducing the carbon footprint within their own supply chains. But in many cases, there's only so much insetting they can do. And so in order to achieve that, uh, that neutral carbon footprint, um, they are having to purchase carbon offsets, carbon removal credits. And so then these credits are tracked, um, very carefully to ensure that they are authentic. And that's a whole, that's a whole process but it can be pretty lucrative. There's all kinds of different carbon credits out there. It's not just a simple, you collect carbon, you get one credit, it's worth $25, boom. 
Yeah, it's a bit more complicated than that. I've got other videos about carbon credits, lots of articles about that on my website also. So you can check those out if you want to get into the nitty gritty. And one, one point, since I mentioned the nitty gritty, there is um, a feature called additionality. And that means you, if you are earning carbon credits as a carbon farmer, you have to demonstrate that your carbon farming project represents something additional, something that would not have existed without the carbon credit system. What they are trying to avoid is somebody going out um, into their backyard, say you have, if your backyard is a, a few hundred acres, uh, say you've got a big ranch and there happens to be um, a giant forest there. It could be fir trees, it could be bamboo, it could be something else. And you want to say, hey, look, I've got this huge forest. It's absorbing tons of CO2 every year, and I want to cash in some carbon credits. They do not want people doing that because that is, um, they don't want to be paying people for doing something that they're doing anyway. The carbon credits are intended to incentivize new projects um, to create additional carbon capture. So they need to demonstrate additionality. You need to be able to show that, look, there's some land that's degraded, that's abandoned, nothing's really happening with it. I'm going to plant a uh, hundred acres of bamboo. It's going to absorb this much CO2 as opposed to the CO2 that would have been absorbed if I hadn't done this. And it all gets a little bit messy because you're trying to compare what you would do compared to what would have otherwise happened. And it's even if you're comparing your projected bamboo farm, you compare that to the degraded land and what that's going to look like in 10 years. You can't really know for sure what that degraded land is going to do in 10 years. Maybe somebody is going to build a shopping center. Maybe somebody is going to plant a, uh, a hemp farm, which is going to actually end up absorbing lots of CO2. Uh, so there's a bit of guesswork and speculation involved in that. And that again is, uh, verging into the territory of the nitty gritty. Um, but let's, uh, pass over the nitty gritty for the moment and get into some specific bamboo carbon farming projects. Um, I actually speak to people almost every week who are engaging in or planning in some massive carbon farming project because they figure if you can get so many dollars per carbon credit and you get so many carbon credits for one acre of bamboo, then how do we make the most money? You take that one acre of bamboo and you multiply it times a hundred or times a thousand or times 20,000. And all of a sudden those dollar signs just start rolling up and people get pretty excited about it. So that's uh, an interesting thing that's happening right now. Uh, I'm a big fan of new and additional bamboo cultivation, forestry, farming, all that stuff. But um, I'm more a fan of it when it's done very thoughtfully, responsibly, um, mindful of biodiversity, uh, local community needs and interests and sensibilities. So it's, uh, again, it gets a bit complicated. It's not just a matter of taking one acre of bamboo that absorbs so much carbon and multiplying it times the biggest number you can come up with. But, uh, so but the big question, the big question, this is the big question. How much CO2 are you collecting from an acre of bamboo? Cause if you're farming, if you're a carbon farmer, this is, this is at the crux of the whole, uh, proposition, the entire enterprise hangs upon this number and the number varies pretty wildly. This is a website from a company in Florida. Uh, if you look here, you might want to pause and zoom in if you want to read that. Um, they're saying that, um, one acre of bamboo can absorb 400 tons of CO2 per year, 400 tons per acre. That's great. Um, carbon credits are represent one ton of CO2. So that means 400 carbon credits per acre. If you're selling carbon credits for $25, um, which could be a reasonable, reasonable, uh, amount for a forestry related carbon credit, 
but I'm just kind of pulling that number out of somewhere. But let's say um, 25 is also easier to multiply times 400. 400 times 25 is going to be what for uh, forty thousand dollars per per uh, per acre, something like that. Um, sorry, no, four hundred times twenty five is going to be about ten thousand per acre. Um, that's a lot. Um, that's a lot of money. Indeed, $10,000 an acre is a lot of money. But then uh, you look at some other websites where they're also engaging in carbon farming with bamboo, and you get a number like uh, 48 tons per acre, which is going to be a lot less. That's closer to closer to um, closer to $1,000 per acre, which is not... Um, Sorry. So this no, this is actually forty-eight tons per um, hectare. Forty-eight tons per hectare, which is more like uh, about twenty, um, something like twenty tons per acre, which is more like uh, what's that going to be? Five hundred dollars per acre in carbon credits. Pretty big difference if you're putting together a business plan, whether you're making 10,000 an acre or 500 an acre. So carbon farming with bamboo, it's a bit, it's a bit risky. Uh, it's a lot of speculation. Another thing is that the vast majority of people I talk to who are eagerly, excitedly talking about bamboo for carbon credit generation, um, it's all very much in the theoretical in the aspirational stage of carbon farming and carbon credit generation. And they're really excited about what could be done and what might be done and, and the great possibilities of carbon credit revenue. Very, very few are actually generating carbon credits, taking them to market, cashing them in and seeing monetary returns on this um, to have more than an idea, but actually put money in the bank one of the only, this is actually the only company that I know of. Doesn't mean it's the only one, but it's the only one I know of that's actually doing that. Um, at least I'm pretty sure they're doing it. Um, actually making money on carbon credits. And that's a company here called, uh, eco planet bamboo. They've got some massive bamboo farming projects, um, in various parts of the world throughout the tropics in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and they are making lots of uh, paper products and pulp with their bamboo. It's pretty great. So yeah, there's some there's some ifs and maybes with carbon farming. Uh, another point to add before we close out here: uh, the decomposition of bamboo. If you're not farming, if you're not harvesting your bamboo, so you're you're farming carbon. That bamboo is absorbing the carbon. But if you just keep letting the bamboo grow and grow and grow, eventually it's going to start looking like this. The poles will age and fall over. New poles will come up, but those old poles will fall over and then will start to decompose. And as they decompose, they are releasing CO2 back into the atmosphere. And so your carbon sink um, is like a big balloon with a hole in it. And the CO2 is just going leaking. Um, so you've got some serious CO2 leakage there. I hope that analogy was was instructive for you. So it is very important if you're carbon farming, if you want to maximize your carbon sink and get the most carbon uh, stored and sequestered from your bamboo, you need to be harvesting it on a regular basis, cutting down the older poles before they start to crack and age and decompose and release CO2. Cut them down before that happens. Make room for fresh new growth keep the bamboo growing vigorously, prevent it from decomposing. Uh, as these poles are harvested, this, there is carbon. Carbon is locked into the tissue and biomass of these poles. They can be made into building products where the bamboo will be stored in the, in the woody uh, structure of the building. Um, so the building itself is like a carbon sink. You could turn it into biochar. As you know, I'm a big fan of biochar. 
uh, I've turned it into biochar, which is an amazing soil additive, um, put that into the soil and the, the carbon is stored there for hundred to 1000 years, which is a great thing for carbon removal. If you're not earning carbon credits on the bamboo forestry, you can be earning carbon credits on the biochar, which is a far more straightforward process. Um, you can contact me about that. That's one of my areas of expertise. Um, so yeah, it's important. Uh, the point here is that carbon farming with bamboo is more complicated than people make it out to be. There are some things to consider additionality, uh, the need to be harvesting your bamboo, um, the process of assessment and verification of a bamboo forestry project can be extremely cumbersome, but it's not impossible. And in the end, um, the more bamboo we plant, the more CO2 we're absorbing. So let's figure out how to do that more productively and effectively. And if you want to talk about it, hit me up. Uh, links are down below in the show notes. Visit my website, contact me through there. Uh, leave comments down below in the comment section. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, do all that cool stuff. Tell your friends, make bamboo batu your new favorite. And we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.